Hello, one and all, and welcome back to another episode of The Brothers Grim Dark. Today, we're going to have a little hobby tutorial for you. We're going to show you how we paint our house Necron army, the Keratet Dynasty. Uh, we had a couple of ideas in mind when we put this army together. The first was we knew it was going to be a relatively hordy army by our standards, lots of warriors roaming about the place. Uh, so we wanted to make sure it was a fairly quick scheme to paint. Um, the second one, if you've been following along, uh, you'll have seen uh, Dean has just recently wrapped up his uh, Warhammer from the beginning project, and this was going to be his kind of reintroduction back into the game, and including all the hobby things that go with that, like painting the models. So Dean was kind of going to be in charge of our first wave of this army, so we wanted to make sure it was a fairly accessible paint scheme for him as well. Uh, something he could grow into, learn some new techniques along the way, but be something that he could get started with and feel pretty confident going forward. So. Lastly, we also took a look at sort of um, a bunch of Egyptian art. Uh, we really kind of wanted to go down that route with, right with them while still straying away a little bit from sort of the classic Necron colors uh, so that it would be kind of our own army, our own theme, rather than just uh, doing one of the existing dynasties, just because that also gives us more flexibility of playing them in different styles if we feel like it as well. So anyway, I hope this is a useful tutorial for you. It's got a bunch of kind of nice, interesting techniques in it, all very simple though, and a bunch of kind of emphasis on speed painting um, and you know batch painting for large armies. Um, so we hope you enjoy it. Hope it looks good on the tabletop, and uh, we'll be over at the painting desk next. Okay, so what we're going to be painting today is this weird little fella. So he is the psychomancer, I believe. I, yeah, I know Necron's sort of okay, but uh, yeah, he's a really cool model. As soon as I saw this one, he's been one I've been uh, wanting to paint for a little for a long time. So uh, cool to get to do this as part of our, our little uh, painting tutorial today. So this is a really simple scheme. We developed it so that we knew we were going to have like a, it was going to be a fairly hordy army, lots of robots uh, kind of crawling around out the sand. So uh, we wanted to come up with something that was fairly quick, but would still look really, really good on the tabletop. Um, so yeah, we're just going to get straight into it. So as you can see, he's already primed. Um, he's primed with lead belcher all over, nothing fancy, zenithal, anything like that. Just straight prime of zenithal. Sorry, <laughs> straight prime of lead belcher. What am I talking about? Um, so the first thing we're going to do is the armor plates on him, um, and that's going to, we, we had this idea where we wanted to come up with a sort of different way of doing gold armor. We almost wanted to look like more like metallic yellow rather than gold, if that makes sense. So to achieve that, we start with this lead belcher base, and what we're going to be doing is giving it a contrast wash of iandin yellow. So it's super simple, that's just going straight over to the armor plates. Um, one thing to note at this time, if you can, Try and avoid getting the yellow on any of the places that aren't those armor plates because we're going to leave those silver um, and do some, do some work on those later. If you do get some yellow on them, not to worry. We're going to touch that up afterwards so it's not the end of the world, but just saves you a bit of time later. So yeah, we're just going to get started and start slopping some yellow on this guy. I'm using a pretty big wash brush for this. As I said, I don't want to be too messy with it, but it's just easy to, to get on all over the place to start with. So I'm really just trying to avoid getting into like those little nooks and crannies, which will be a little bit tougher to touch up with silver. One thing that's nice about contrast paints is because they're quite runny if you do make a mistake, like I just did, it's quite easy to get it off quickly. Just clean your brush and wipe it off. Just checking to make sure I Got everything on here. Didn't miss any bits. I think that's looking okay. So now you can see he's all all the all the armor plates have done with yellow, but I've left everything else in that lead belcher color. Now I think I actually did a relatively tidy job. <laughs> I think um, putting that on. Oh, I've missed a little bit. I'm going to fill that in first. I missed this little little bit of armor plate in here, but. In general, I think I've kept that fairly tidy. At this point, if you did make any mistakes, um, I would just go back and touch those up with lead belcher uh, because the next stage we're going to do is giving the, those silver areas a wash. So you kind of want to make sure that they're all nicely blocked in at this point. Next, we're going to move on to uh, my favorite color to put over top of lead belcher is uh, the basilicanum contrast. Uh, let's just give this, always give your contrast a good shake. They get kind of murky at the bottom. This one, you can really see it gets that white at the bottom of it if you're not mixed up properly so just give it a shake until that's all until that's all nicely tidied up so what we're going to be doing with this is anything which is silver 
um, which is mostly going to be the armor plates, um, the, his coils, things like that. Uh, we're going to wash that all over with basilicanum. And I find that just gives it a nice kind of like dull metal um, finish. I prefer that to null oil personally, but that would work as well if you prefer that kind of look. Um, but yeah, it's just a, I find it gives it a nice finish over, over silver. A sort of gunmetal sort of look. So same idea here, we're just going to go through all these different bits. So like all these cables here, all the cables inside, um, and these little bits here. Try not to get this on top of the yellow again, you can kind of tidy it up quickly if you do. But yeah, so we're just going to get cracking with that now. And I know it's a contrast paint, but I really do use this one kind of like a wash, really sort of slosh it on there. It doesn't matter if you're going to dull it too much because um, we're going to end up highlighting everything afterwards with a, with a brighter silver, which will help pick out all the highlights and make those a bit more glossy and shiny again. So don't worry about kind of getting this all over everything. It's going to be silver anyway. Let's make sure it's getting in all those cracks. This boy really does have a lot of cables on him, doesn't he? Weird tentacle monster. This is a very cool sculpt, this one. I love these just floating on these cables and has this crazy psychic skull thing project, projecting at the end of it. Just a, what a bizarre concept. I love these, they're a size 3 brush. I use them for just about everything. It's got a really good point on it, so you can use it for detail work, but also still great for sloshing washes on things. It's probably my most used brush by a long margin now. And this is the thing with Necrons, they're all sort of carapaces on top of inner weird workings and stuff, so just be a little bit careful and poke your brush into these cracks and try not to cover up the yellow you did earlier, but you can usually get in okay to give a decent wash on the, these inner bits of silver that we left from earlier. Creepy little fingers. Everything about this model is just weird and creepy. Even his fingers are weird and creepy. <laughs> and whatever is going on over here. Get in the, around the back of his head and shoulders here. So I'm just kind of plopping paint into these crevices. And darken this area up a little bit here with the second coat. Because it's going to get dry brush highlighted anyway, so I just kind of want to make sure that gets a bit extra emphasis. So what's quite nice about the scheme is what we're going to do next is we're going to give a highlight over all of the metal. We're going to do a bright silver and we're going to apply that to both the grey bit we just did and the, the yellow from earlier. Um, but I'm just going to let this guy dry first so we can get that on properly and then we'll come back and do some dry brushing. So now we've got those two coats on. We've got the good base on the yellow and silver armor. We're just going to do that universal highlight on everything and we're just going to use a nice big dry brush um, and put that all over. Uh, you might need to switch to a smaller dry brush to get into some of the, the little crevasses, but I always find it easier to start with as big a one as you can get away with really, and then kind of work your way down as necessary. So we're going to be using Stormhost Silver, nice bright silver color here. I'm just getting much of that off the brush as possible. And we'll just kind of build this up. I'm really going to focus on the edges. Um, even though we've got a big brush, you can kind of focus where you kind of want it to go. Um, and just, yeah, bring some of those, those highlights back. So I'm just going to start working my way along these cables. And see it's already brightening them right up. Because this guy's quite spindly, I'm going to have to be a little bit careful about where I hold him as I'm doing this. And you can be quite soft with your dry brushing and then just build it up over time. There's a lot of factors that kind of go into it, how much paint's on your brush, how, how damp you've made your brush, but I find a lot of it is just how much pressure you're putting on the brush as well. That really changes how much paint is coming off. So you can kind of control the, the gradients you're building up. Um, a lot of it just with the how much pressure you're putting on. Oh dear. His head's come a bit loose. I'll have to come back and sort that out. Got a wobbly head. That's not so good. All right, so I'm just going to switch to a slightly smaller dry brush now so I can get into a few of these more detailed spots. I'm looking for things like these little bolts and divots and things like that. Those will catch dry brush quite nicely and just pop out a little bit more. 
Well, it's heads off, I'll do that. So easy. <laughs> okay, so get to a bit easier. Maybe this is all, all part of the plan. Right. So that's mostly it. The very last thing I'm going to do is just because I find that once we've done that silver coat over everything, the yellow is maybe a little bit yet less yellow than we'd like. Um, just to, so it reads more as like yellow rather than just silver with a, a kind of yellowy touch. So what I like to do is use um, Cassandora yellow. And we're just going to do a really light glaze in like the shadowy type of areas. So um, like on the base back panels are actually a really good example here. So in this sort of ridge that goes along here, I'm going to glaze a little bit in there in the kind of creases and things. One, it will just give it a little bit more depth and it will add a little bit more of that sort of yellowy orange kind of tint to things, uh, which I think just helps the color stand out a little bit more. I'm gonna go back to my lovely size three brush and we're just gonna glaze some Cassandora into these areas. So as I was saying, like right along here, this looks like a good spot to me. It just pops the color a little bit and aim for these weird lines and recesses and things. You can start to drop the paint in there a little bit too. Don't know what this is, weird headdress thing. I really like the look of it. Yeah, just gonna put a little bit more of in that crack area there as well. Again, just it'll make the shape maybe seem even more sort of three-dimensional and give us a little bit more of that extra yellow orangey tone. So I do find all of the contrast paints are quite different. Some of them are very saturated and some of them are, are much more um, uh, translucent. And the and in yellow one, I really like it for tinting things. I think it's got a nice finish, but um, yeah, it's not the strongest. So I do think going over with Cassandora later as a second kind of coat to add a bit more shade is, does help boost the color a little bit. So it can just be a bit, bit peely wheely without, without that. All right. So that is really it in terms of like the armor. That's the, the silver and yellow and done now, which is the majority of the model. It's a very simple, very quick, um, very easy to do a whole bunch of these in, at once, which is what we want because this is essentially a horde army. We've got, you know, 40 warriors over there, tons of immortals and destroyers and things. So you really want a scheme that looks good, but, um, you know, you can paint it really, really quickly. So next I'm going to go on to a few of the details. Uh, one thing we kind of, when we were looking at, we were looking at a lot of sort of Egyptian um, artwork and things as part of the inspiration for the color scheme. So along with the yellow, uh, one of the colors that we saw associated with sort of royalty and gemstones and things was purple. Uh, so we've been using that as one of our spot colors. So I'm going to use that on a few of kind of the details on his head and on his staff. Um, just as kind of like those symbols of royalty on the warriors we use on their chest piece, uh, which kind of marks their, their dynasty. So to do this, the first coat is going to be Nagaroth Knight, really nice dark purple color. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of that on my wet palette and start putting that on. So yeah, like on the chest piece in here, that's gonna be purple. Same thing for this bit on the staff here. You know, when they've got these kind of icons on them for that part as well. And then his beard, what's that called? It must be an Egyptian term for their fake beardy things. But yes, whatever that's called, it's going to be going to be purple too. And purple is also obviously a strong complement color to yellow, so it really stands out quite nicely, even though you don't need too much of it. So you want to be, you don't want to put tons and tons of purple markings on there, which is kind of why we reserved it for more of the the royalty and um, these sort of royal symbols and things. It's also nice as a complement because this is not going to be a, a metallic. So as opposed to the yellow and the silver, obviously, which are, you know, the, the main body of the arm, we want that to look a bit more utilitarian. Um, and those, those kind of metallic tones, these are almost more like sort of precious stones, I imagine. So we're going for more of that kind of look, a bit more matte um, than the, again, just to make it, give it a little bit of a different tone than, than what we've got going on with the rest of the metallic model, because most of it is metals. And again, name of the game here because this is mostly army painting. We're trying to move things along fairly quickly. I'm just going to do one little highlight of this. Uh, we're going to use the Chala Lilac, the Kala Lilac. Uh, who knows how to pronounce that? But, you know, nice lilac y color. Um, good, good highlight for this Nagroth Knight. You might want to do an intermediary like Jean Steeler Purple or something like that if you want to dress up more of the sort of character models. But for your rank and file, um, I find that just 
one quick highlight of the the chala, the chala, the kala, whatever it is, it's good enough to, to you know, kind of get things going. So for here, I'm just going to pick out this symbol that's in the middle. Just use the edge of your brush. It's quite easy to do like that. Same thing for the staff here. You can just use edge your brush to pick out that symbol. Turn out the haze with your head resting. The brush one down. Okay, so one side done. And then his beard. <laughs> we need a whole story about this man's weird beard at this point. His head that falls off. But yeah, just a nice quick highlight along the edges here. That's one more color down. We've done the yellow, we've done the gray, silver, and we've done the purple. And so the last thing we do is for more of the sort of energy weapons, the power cables, things like that, uh, we go with a nice sort of tealy color. And again, this kind of came back from looking at like Egyptian jewelry and things like that. We saw purple, we saw teal, we saw gold. Um, so we're really trying to bring those all together, go full on, full on, on the Egyptian theme. Uh, so for this, we're going to do some, you know, sort of standard, um, pretty simple glow technique. We're going to paint it white and then put a contrast wash on top, and then usually a second one just to kind of sell the the um, the effect a little bit. So I will actually use his head for this. It's quite a quite nice little orb. Hopefully, I'll show up on camera. So we'll do his big glowing eye. So yeah, we're just going to paint that white first. You can use whatever white you want for this, obviously, whatever you got in your paint box. I really like the, um, what is it, the Pro Acryl uh, Bold Titanium White. I think it's about the only non-Citadel paint I use, uh, just because I think it's so much better. Uh, it's got really good coverage, uh, flows really well, and it's just a really nice, solid white. But for this, just whatever, whatever you got handy, really. Just give it a second coat. Get a nice, solid coverage in there. Okay, we'll leave that for a minute. That really is <laughs> fiddly little head. Now I'm just gonna look for a few other ones. I'll pick those out now. A few these orby things on the side, we'll do those. Oh, and these, remember I was gonna do these as well. Don't know what they are. Weird powery things on his arm. Now come back and do the rest of them later, but just to give you the idea for now. Right, and for this sort of tealy glow color, again, to kind of complement the yellow and the purple, uh, I'm using Ethermatic Blue, really nice contrast color. This is, again, one of the ones that I find is quite desaturated, quite uh, translucent, um, which makes it work quite well for glow effects and things like that, and using it almost like a wash in some cases. Uh, so I'm just going to give this a good shake, and what we're going to do is we're going to give it one coat kind of all over that uh, white area we did, and then around the edge as well to kind of get that glow. And then once that dry, I find it's you often kind of need to do one more coat just kind of in the recess, uh, just to saturate the color a little bit more because it is quite quite translucent. And as you're putting this on, because we want the center of the eye to be the, the brightest part or the source of the glow, um, you can just kind of keep moving the paint away from that so that it stays mostly white. So we've got more of the green in the recesses and kind of around where that glow will be. But yeah, we want to keep the actual center of the eye itself. Uh, it's going to be fairly white. But as I said, like this, this contrast paint I do find quite translucent, so you can be fairly liberal with it at this point. Okay, so let's coat one. And just do that for all of your Orby things, all of anything you want to be have that glowing effect. We do it on the kind of power cables for their weapons and things like that too. All right, so I'm just gonna give a second coat again, right in that recess, so leave the center of the eye. Um, and that, that's it. So we've kind of covered how we do um, the yellow, signature kind of yellow armor, how we do the silver part of it, um, the purple for like the gems and, the, and um, those sort of royal symbols, and then the glowing effect. 
And that's really it for the Necrons. That's, um, it's a very simple scheme. Um, it's, it's, as I said, something you can get through fairly quickly, um, but we think it looks really good on the tabletop. It's got a quite nice, unique look to it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this guy off now and put his head back on. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll show you some pictures of what he looks like at the end. But um, yeah, if you've got any questions about how, about how this goes or any other ticks or techniques we should be taking a look at, please let us know. And yeah, we'll see you again in another episode.